when talking about victimless crimes, there are certain things that we need to consider. One, and this is a philosophical uh, point, as well as I guess there's data on it, but can you and or should you uh, try to legislate morality or behavior that is, again, in this case, we'll say victimless, except for the person doing it. Uh, and that's, if you believe you should do that, then a lot of these laws you're in favor of. If you believe you shouldn't do that, then of course you would consider them a silly law and, and you would be against them. In regard to that, though, you need to be aware of something that I'll call the principle of the slippery slope. And I've heard the right talk about it, and I've heard the left talk about it, and everybody in between. But when you give a reason why a law should be done as protecting you from yourself, you got to watch out where you're going to stop. If you believe in the laws that tells you what you need to do, there may be laws in the future that say you need to exercise, or you need to eat certain foods. Uh, or take certain medications or whatever. And so you can say, well, yeah, but there's, there, there, I know where the, the line is drawn. Just be aware that, that an argument that you used for one law, somebody else could use, I would say, against you for what you want for another law. So that's a slippery slope and you need to be aware of that. You also need to be thinking about will the law actually change the behavior? Uh, if you're making a law to get people to either not do something or to do something, will they in fact do it? And if they do not do it, if it does not change their behavior, then all the law is going to do is make them a criminal when in fact they weren't before and it's going to cost money and, and it has a lot of consequences to it. So if it's not going to change the behavior, maybe you shouldn't have it as being a law. It's just something that you need to think about. Now the last thing you need to consider is what are the unintended consequences? We talked about that earlier, but when you looked at vi uh, what I call victimless laws, but uh, laws that are really not harming anybody but the, for the most part, but the person that is doing it, are there unintended consequences to the individual and more importantly, are there unintended consequences to society? And I think a uh, good way to look at that is to look at prohibition because that was a law that said people were not allowed to drink alcohol and what was the result of that law? I'm going to give you a series of questions that you might want to think about and then see what, the, and I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what the answer is on this. But number one, after the law was, was passed, in other words, alcohol was now prohibited, did it make it any harder for people to get a hold of alcohol? I'm sure at first it did, but as time went on, how easy was it for people to be able to get a hold of it, even though it was illegal? And if it didn't make it any harder, then that's one thing that we, you have to hold against it. How much violence was perpetrated because of the law? In other words, when alcohol was legal, how, much, how many people were getting killed because of alcohol or related to the alcohol versus after the law was uh, uh, past. And of course we know that there was a lot of violence in, in the selling and in, in the gangs and all that. To what degree did the law cause that and by repealing the law, to what degree would that end? Well, prohibition we can sort of look at the history, but it, it's something to think about with any law that you're getting ready to put in the, the books that has to do with modifying somebody's behavior. From a societal aspect, to what degree did the law modify the general behavior of society? In other words, before prohibition, what percentage of people drank and how much? And then after prohibition, how much did people drink and how many people were still drinking or began to drink again? And again, the statistics are out there, I'm sure, I didn't look at them, but when we look at laws in the 
future, this is something that we need to think about. Because if it's not really making any difference, it's another strike against it. In Prohibition, uh, or before Prohibition, alcohol was regulated. After Prohibition, it was not. So the question is, how safe was it to drink and by, uh, because of other uh, toxins that might be in it besides alcohol? And if it was repealed, to what degree would the government be able to regulate it and therefore make it a safer product? Questions you need to think about. How many lives did prohibition ruin? And what I'm talking about is people that were doing something, and of course you know about how corruption works. Somebody could get caught and not be prosecuted. Somebody else could be caught and prosecuted. But how many people were thrown in jail uh, and their lives basically ruined because of this law? And if the law was not there, did society come out better or worse because of that? And that really is the last thing that, that you need to think about, is will society be better off if a victimless crime law is on the books or if it's not on the books? If it's worse off, then it's obviously a civil, civil law. If it's better off, then it has something going for it, which is a good thing. So what I've tried to do here is give you some things to think about some principles that you can use to evaluate whether you think a law is silly or not, and then uh, something about categories of laws about making you do something or prohibiting you from do, doing something. And then when you look at that, asking yourself questions about how helpful or harmful or neutral the law might be. And of course, your personal philosophy, your religious views, all of these things are going to be a part of the a part of the puzzle. So uh, you need to also look at that when you decide you should be in favor of a law or you should be in favor of 